Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. Today is 45 degrees currently. Misting, rain, cold, damp conditions. Perfect time to go crappie fishing from the bank. Stay with me. Whoa! All right, folks. We finally made it. It's been raining hard all the way up here. Uh, it was raining hard, and I thought I was going to have to have a raincoat on. But it ain't raining right now. So we're going to do some crappie fishing from the bank right here. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to start off with right here. It is a Sam's Super Sensitive IM6 Graphite Jig Pole nine foot three long light as a feather that's four pound mr crappie and here on the business end we have a bobby garland with a 132nd ounce jig head and that's a number six sickle hook and the jig's tied with a loop knot and an old reel. This is a Garcia Mitchell 308. Now the thing about this is I gotta figure out how deep the crappie are, folks. Now, to start with, I know the fish is in here. I know the crappie's in here. But finding out how deep they are is the key to really catching crappie. I've mentioned that a lot of times. Now, 132nd ounce jig, as y'all know, if y'all been watching my channel, falls about a foot a second. So that's how I guesstimate how deep I am. Getting that first bite is the deal with crappie, folks. Figuring out how deep they are and catching that first fish. Once I catch that first fish, the crappie's had it. There he is, folks. My, 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 my. That fish hit it so light. I mentioned the fact that I believe, in my opinion, that uh, <coughs> high-vis line is important for crappie fishing. I can't stress that because it was just a tick. I did not feel the strike. Even with this long rod, all I did was right where the the line hits the water is this thing it go tick just just a tick and that's how I like that fish right there a bit but let's put him in the bucket okay one thing about it mama sue she's not going to go without crappie this winter look you under I told her that I would catch crappie for her. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm getting sick and tired, folks, of hearing all the griping about not having no fish in the freezer. So what I'm doing is stocking up, vacuum sealing some fish <laughs> for her. I eat them too, but not like her. So that I can focus on my fishing because fishing is a sport. Well, it's second to none. Let's catch another. Woo. Let's pitch it right back out there. All right, that's about five foot. We'll pick her rod up and I'm just letting that jig just fall back to me real slow. That's all it's taking right now. Just let it just fall back to me real slow holding it right in front of their face every once in a while now i'm picking it up and letting it fall a few inches but i'm keeping it at that five foot depth god that fish knocked the fire out of it this is a good one this is a good one it was thump very aggressive. That's funny how some of them I hit real aggressive and others won't. But now, the way that I'm getting them to hit, let's see if we can flip him in. He's a good crappie. 
doggone good fish. The way I'm getting them to hit, and the only way, folks, is by <laughs> working it very, very slow. And I'm going to point out uh, that that long rod is enabling me to keep that jig in front of these fish for a long period of time. See, they've slowed down. At the beginning, I was catching the heck out of crappie quick. And then they got inactive. Well, that's the nature of a crappie. So when they do that, it is so important to slow down everything, your presentation and everything. They're still hitting anywhere between five and six feet deep, though. They're, they're staying at that level, which I'm surprised. Usually when they get inactive, I've found that a lot of times they'll go a little bit deeper. They'll fade down deeper. You got to watch for details. You, well, really, you got to listen to the fish. What they're telling you is far more important than what you think or what you want to make happen. You just got to listen to them. But slow is the key. See, I'm just holding it there and putting a little bit of wiggle in that jig by picking it up about an inch and letting it fall back an inch and reeling at the same time. That way I can keep it four and a half, five feet deep. And this long rod's enabling me to do that. Enables me to do that. All right, let's let it fall about four or five feet deep. I'm going to pick my rod up and just let that bait fall to me real slow. As it's falling, I'm going to pick up the slack and then I'll go ahead and hook it. Look here, folks. Got them dialed in. That's a good fish right there. Yeah, that's a good crappie. My goodness, there's a school wadded up right there, folks. Let's see if we can flip him in the boat right here. I wish he'd fight a little bit. Golly. That's a good eating size right there. Y'all excuse this cut on my hand right here. I know it looks bad. I tried to stop this morning, get some Band-Aids and put a Band-Aid over it so that y'all wouldn't have to look at it. Let's put him in the bucket. But I waited for about 20 minutes and couldn't get no service, so I just come on fishing. Oh, let's hang around just a little bit, Melvin. Old man Cecil will be coming around that corner here in a minute. We're going to lose some catfishing in here tonight. He'll be here. He just had some trouble having the poops here lately. I think his old stomachs are feeling better. He'll be in here. This long rod is an advantage from the bank. When they're this close, when they're this close to the bank, you can keep that jig at the right depth and can control it a lot better than you can with a short rod. It's almost like vertical jigging, but not just, not quite. There he is. Golly. That's another good fish. I'm catching a lot of little ones, folks. I'm not showing them. Oh, uh, I've caught a lot of crappie right here today or the last couple, two or three hours I've been here. And every one of them, they're staying the same depth. That's fascinating me because usually it's not this easy or it's not for me. That's a good keeper. My mama is gonna be very, very happy. Well, folks, that's about all I had. I mean, I caught a lot of fish. I caught a bunch of fish, but these were the only keepers that I had. I think this is the best crappie right here. And 
they're all keepers and I throw back <laughs> uh, four times more of that than that four times more. and here's a bonus sauger which was given to me I didn't catch it it was given to me so I took it so that's gonna be a good meal for mama sue if you got a good woman well take care of them boys my 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 well folks that was a lot of fun for three hours worth of fishing now today i looked out it didn't rain it was supposed to come down i guess it's gonna be tonight when it's gonna be here i'm glad the weather man was wrong but i want to thank y'all very much for requesting bank videos um i love to do them very easy when you locate fish but but the thing about it is what's real important in my opinion is that long rod when you're bank fishing you need to have total control over your jig to make it look natural uh, i want to say thank y'all very much for everything y'all do all the great comments and whoa I'm talking about dogs, dogs. Hey, woo. And to remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food.